Hello folks, fresh back from Alex, and uh, I thought we'd have a, a quick video to uh, look at the, the goodies, the bits and bobs, the odds, and indeed the sods, if you will. Can you see the bits and bobs and odds and sods? There we go. Apologies to my camera operator, she's hopeless. Back up here. <laughs> there we are. Hopefully my audio problems are resolved. I've got this Rode wireless mic now, so uh, no more audio problems on my videos. Uh, I saw Dan on DSS. Uh, using one of these things and if it's good enough for the big grizzly bear it's got to be good enough for the kind of rubbish I put out but anyway let's have a look at uh, what's uh, what we got from Alex today and uh, there's all sorts of goodies uh, in here um, I'm fairly tooled up I have to say so I didn't buy a lot of tools because I, I just can't think of what else to spend my money on these days so this is more consumables than tools but we'll have a, a quick rifle through what we've got here because uh, obviously some of you may be attending uh, the second day of Alex tomorrow I'm afraid I've got to be working but never mind um, quick wire stuff uh, obviously I did a video on these things last year uh, and I still still rate it good kit some interesting innovations coming out from there this is the the lighting junction box ranges but um, I notice on the stand that they're going to be bringing out a 32 amp version of their uh, junction box connector obviously these are these are the rated at 16 amp for lighting but they're bringing out a 32 amp one next year I think believe you said which would be ideal for splicing into ring circuits where you chop the cable and have to put a, a splice in to spur off. Similar to a Hager J803, but without the uh, horrible cord grips that you have to screw in really hard and without the earth leaving. And I even got a mug out of them as well, so that's nice. Never have too many mugs, I find. You've got to decant your spirits into something. And there's something more important I got from the, the quick wire stand, and that was a, uh, a bottle opener. And I can confirm that works a treat. Oh yeah, I'll tell you what, it's a hot day for September, isn't it? Uh, Armeg as well, we, we actually got quite a bit out of Armeg. There are a few bits and bobs, there's always the Armeg peg. You know what, I've got an Armeg pen that I've had for about three years in my pocket here and it's worn down to nonsense, but I'll tell you what, it's still going strong. Uh, a new box sinker, we did a video on box syncing where I said that my um, what do you call it in the middle had broken off and that's now to replace that and i've also got some some ends what the neil on the arm egg stand was telling us about that you've you know you've got to keep these things properly lubricated to stop them from overheating and from shanks from breaking so he's given us some um, condoms to put on the end to prevent you from getting grease all over your bloody hands so that was nice of him also from arm egg a new socket and screwdriver bit set. Let's have a look at that, shall we? I've got a, a cheapo, cheapo little one. Oh, I can't get out of the packaging. A cheapo, cheapo little one that I've carried in my toolbox since the year dot, which is okay, but it's, well, it is a bit cheapo. Um, but look at that, isn't that sweet? And you can use that for sort of doing your ratchet screw driving around corners and things. It gets into places that even your stubbies can't get into. So, uh, that's a nice thing, isn't it? Well worth a look on the arm stand. Uh, we've got some various drill bits as well. Uh, what else did we get from arm Ah, uh, yes. Essential, of course. For your chase work. A couple of decent drill bits there. Uh, impact rated. Cobalt bits. Oh, another arm pen. You always come out of these things with lots of pens. And uh, oh, I seem to have a, a nice cloth there. I'll keep up with the camera for cleaning the lens, I think. And one of those torch key rings things that never quite work, but <laughs> never mind. I think that's the arm stuff. Uh, screwdrivers, I mentioned on Twitter that my freebie Hager screwdrivers were getting a little bit worn, been poked into one hole too many. So I've decided to treat myself to a new screwdriver set and let's buy British and buy Boddington's. I did a review on Boddington's in Electrical Times magazine. Must have been about three years ago. Good stuff. So these are going to replace the Barcos in my toolbox and the Barcos can replace the Hagers on my tool belt. Uh, so yeah, looking forward to, to using those. They have some good cutters and stuff on um, on the Boddington's stall, but I've, I've already got some of their cutters, so I didn't need to buy any more. Push fit connectors, 
looking for the ideal stand. We do like the splice lines and we've got some of these boxes as well, which is a new product. I haven't had a chance to play with them yet. But um, maintenance free offerings, ideal for use with the splice line connectors. Crikey, I don't know how you open them. Oh, there we go. Interesting enclosure that. So similar to perhaps the Connects box ranges, but in splice line blue. My favourite colour. From the Napit stand, uh, Napit code breakers book. Never actually seen this, but I hear good things about it. So I want to have a, a little rifle through that and find uh, find what I've been coding wrong on my EICRs all these years. No doubt there's going to be something. RRP 1999, I can't remember if that's what I paid or not. I know I had to pay a pound extra because I'm not an APIT member anymore. But um, if you're an APIT member, you get it a quid cheaper. So there you go, there's a, a cost benefit for you. Ooh, Vargo. Vargo, Vargo. My goodness. We blew a few quid on the Vargo store. But you know what? We get, we get through this stuff. This is a few months worth, obviously. But you may as well make use of the show discount over what the wholesalers ordinarily charge you. And also, uh, we've got somewhere, just being this other box here, one of their new 2214 boxes, which is for the 221 connectors. Let's open up a 221 connector, shall we? And you can see that the 221 connectors actually slot into there rather nicely. So um, they were telling me the idea of that is to prevent vibration. Apparently, if you have a normal Varga box or Connects box and you've got, got the 221s in there, then it doesn't comply with maintenance free because they can vibrate around too much. Not that I imagine if you've got this under a floor somewhere, it's going to be vibrating at all, unless there's some kind of earthquake, in which case you've got bigger problems to be worrying about. Uh, but as well as that, they they also did me for um, oh, cracking the boxes of these things. Oh, I've got an XL box as well. And one of their. I've not actually used any of these, but I want to have a play with that. So uh, that's one of their IP68 clear capsule boxes. Looks like interesting, does it not? Embargo. They also did me for, and I can't find it. The inserts. Oh, Mr. Hope, I bought them. I'm sure I paid for them. Here we go. These inserts will go into a standard Vargo box. Here's one I haven't prepared earlier. To turn it into the equivalent of kind of a 221 box. So your thinner Vargo connectors like these things here, or the um, the two two ones or whatever, can they, they sort of fit in there like that? Apparently, and again, it's all down to reducing vibration. Interesting. They've also said that uh, on the, the newer boxes, they've made these things more flexible because too many people are just whipping them out and spinning them off. People like me, because otherwise they're a, a bit of a pain in the ass. So that's new on the Connects box front. Superod, the Superod Cable Tongue Pro. Uh, we had a chance to use one, one of these. I think it was actually a different make. I think it was a CK one um, on a site recently where the person we were with had one, and it looks quite interesting for fishing cables around holes and things when you're doing downlights or whatever. It comes with a, a couple of accessories, so we'll be playing with that out on site at some stage. Magic. <clears throat> Tangfastics, Eaton. Uh, Linian. Robbed a few samples off them. Uh, we were fortunate enough to meet Lynn. Uh, Ian was there, but uh, we, were we were talking to Lynn. The company is apparently named after Lynn and Ian, and we're talking about their new fire clips. GSH did a video on these um, about two or three months ago. Uh, they do look like an interesting product. We have used them, but uh, we still find it 
difficult to get them out of places like CEF, so we need to have a word with our account manager and say, look, get these things in quantity on your shelves, for goodness sake. But uh, yeah, they, they look like they're going to be handy for the job there. Uh, we went to the Skullmore, uh, where they have a challenge board, and where I failed to come in first place. In fact, I'm fourth place at the moment, so if you're attending tomorrow, see if you can beat my time. <sighs> Shouldn't be too hard. Got a cup out of them as well. Uh, you should also see more coming up from Skullmore on their SGTV channel on YouTube, uh, of which uh, there's some half-drunken idiot who's forgotten his hat talking nonsense on various videos. Uh, I think that's... Uh, is that everything for today? I think that's all the stuff I got out of it for today. Like I said, the screwdrivers are about the only tools I actually bought. Everything else is fairly consumable. Oh, I've got a Skullmore tape measure as well. It's nice, isn't it? Nice action. Very nice action. So yeah, it's, it's obviously there's some, some tool parts from Marmega there, and there's the screwdrivers are the main tools, but everything else is kind of, well, there's a, the rods thing as well. Everything else is kind of consumable, really. Uh, but yeah, interesting, nice nice to get stocked up. And uh, thanks to everybody who um, who I was chatting to today. I met a few a few people who uh, gave their appreciation for the, the videos that Nigel and I put out. It's nice to know somebody out there is watching the damn things. So uh, that's something. Uh, it was also interesting we attended the tech talk this morning on surge protection, uh, just to make sure that, because uh, we did a video on surge protection last year, just to make sure that we hadn't completely misread the situation. And uh, I think it still stands up, the video. Uh, one interesting thing was the the lady from uh, surge protection devices was there again this year. Uh, she's the one I was talking to last year really knows her stuff uh, and um, she was saying that someone asked a question about whether they could use the SPD devices her from Search Protection Devices Limited in other people's boards obviously there's a regulation about what you can use uh, in terms of uh, manufacturers uh, type rating in different boards I've got their device in my Wirelex board for example and she was saying because it's a passive device you, you can use it pretty much any board you want so uh, I feel less guilty now about fitting it in my Wirelex board so that was an interesting thing for them to say the, the, Hager, the Hager chap next to her was perhaps uh, uh, less inclined to agree but um, he didn't rule it out completely and there we go that's um, that's Alex for this year so if you're attending tomorrow, have a good show, and uh, I'll see you next time. Cheers.